Hi guys, welcome. Uh, we're live from Amsterdam Dance Event. We're here with David Castellani. Hi Hello. David, how are you? Great, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Are you excited for ADE? Oh, so excited. Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be a good rest of the week. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your setup? And because um, this is not your usual setup, so... Yeah, yeah. So usually I play kind of a, a much larger, you know, rig, but it, of course it's, it's very tough to get that stuff on planes, you know, so it's it's a big process. So here what I did today is I have two smaller uh, 128 HP cases. Um, and then what I do is I have essentially um, a song card that has 32 inputs. So I have all the inputs separated. And then I have a DigiTact and I have um, a Zen Delay from Erica Synths and uh, Ninja Tunes, which is really wow, cool. Wow, that's really impressive. Yeah. How did you start with this setup? Like, what was your first ever setup when you started DJing? Well, it's been a long time, you know, I'm, hardware is really kind of like my main thing and I've been working on it for a long time. So it's been a lot of work, um, you know, I guess. Um, I started off, you know, I think like a lot of people just, uh, you know, mainly on, on decks, you know, traditional Pioneer decks. And then from there, uh, got more into hardware stuff and uh, using it in the studio a lot. I got into Eurorack. And then with Eurorack, I really realized that I fell in love with it so much. It's kind of an addiction. Right. It's, Passion slash addiction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a problem, you know, but um, it's something that's just so exciting and so fun to play. Mm -hmm. um, that from there, I just realized that that's really what I wanted to do and push. And ever since then, that's what I've been, you know, devoting myself to. So. Yeah, I guess you must get like another type of thrill when you play with like so many stuff around you. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really interesting concept because it's kind of like um, there's a lot of stuff that you have control of, but there's also a lot of things that are happening um, without your control at the mm, same time. Interesting. It's kind of like a coexistence in a, in a in a relationship that you have with the instruments, and you. I use it a lot. The same example of uh, you know, kind of like riding a horse. Okay. It's like when you're on a horse, it's like yes, you're in control and you're kind of trying to guide the horse, but at the same time, the horse is also its own beast and it yeah. has its own thoughts and its own mind and what it wants to do so you have to work together yeah um and another really beautiful thing about your rack is like every time you start and you patch you kind of know you're going to end up in some new place where you're not sure what that place is going to be but you know it's really exciting and it's gonna that's be really so fun. fascinating yeah <laughs> It's a lot of fun. So you've started your modular company. Yes. How did you start all of that? That kind of came out of just a, a natural understanding of having um, seeing an idea for something that I thought was going to be a, a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, I have a, a good friend, my partner, who is an engineer, and we started chatting a little bit. And, you know, we just decided, hey, let's let's try to make this thing. So it's been a long process because we started uh, almost two years ago now. Um, and we thought we were going to be done in about six months. And yeah. you know, here we are two years later. Getting I mean, ready. hasn't COVID been a bit of a... COVID has been a part of it, especially for the supply chain situation mm -hmm. for us to be able to get parts and stuff. But overall, it's really just been a lot of work. Yeah, you know? I can imagine. Yeah. If you would have to define modular to someone that has no clue of what it means, sure. how would you go about it? Um, modular synthesizers are kind of looked at as like, if you think about any synthesizer that you've ever seen, um, it doesn't matter which synth you like, you know, when you have a keyboard and a traditional synthesizer, that's made out of five main components, pretty much. It's like mm -hmm. five building blocks in the same way that you have a car, you know, when all, all cars have steering wheels and tires and so on. Um, and what modular is essentially is you have the same concept, but you buy all those components individually and then you connect them yourself with the cables. Right. So a few different things happen. One is you have the ability a to uh, kind of change the signal flow. So change the way that the sound and the audio and, and all the information travels through the chain, which allows you to be more creative and add different parts and, and different things like that. But then also um, what it um, what allows you to do is is have the ability to really uh, lay into the modulation of everything because every knob that you see essentially has a modulation source where you can plug in you know an electrical current and make the knob turn by itself. Right. So you kind of have this ability to make every, every component come to life like uniquely. You know. And Sounds it's very different. technical though. <laughs> it is. I it, get why it took two years then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's more complicated than it seems. Honestly, yeah. once you start doing it, it gets pretty easy. It's kind of like same with driving a car. You know, if like yeah. you've never driven a car first, you're worried about it, trying to figure it out and keep your hands on the wheels and Thing, but then after a while it becomes kind of second nature exactly becomes, the more you practice it uh, right that was with with everything I yeah think. so tell us a bit about your label noetic yep um so i have a record label noetic um it's uh we've been going on uh, over a year now so really excited um you know where i'm la based and um just really kind of a hub for me to be able to start pushing uh you know music and other artists that i, that I appreciate um i've been really lucky to have uh, some strong releases and been working with great people on the label
comfortable. Um, you know, I've had chances to work with uh, Matrix Man and Red Shape, uh, ETAP Kyle. Um, I actually have a, a track coming out. It's going to be remixed with DJ Hyperactive on Friday. Amazing. It's coming out uh, to, the day after tomorrow. So just, you know, an exciting way of, you know, it's a dream as always to have a record label and to push. Yeah. So I feel very blessed. I can imagine. It. Yeah. About that. So you're based in LA. Yeah. How is the techno scene there? The techno scene is beautiful in LA. It's actually really, really strong. Um, it's an interesting uh, city because you have the ability to really throw big um, underground events uh, with very little distraction from the city. And um, I would say that actually in the US is probably one of the better cities right now. That's pushing. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's noted. <laughs> yeah. If you were in a DJ, what yeah. would you be? I would um, most likely probably be working with animals. I think okay. honestly, I'm a big animal fan, so I think I would probably be doing something with with furry little things with eyeballs so. nice yeah. amazing well thank you so much thank for you. coming here and doing this amazing set yeah uh, i hope your set in ad goes really well thank you so much <laughs>